Between 1978 and 2010, former Vice President Dick Cheney had five heart attacks. As you can imagine, when someone has a position like Vice President of the United States, they get really good medical care. And so Dick Cheney had implanted a heart pump to help with his blood flow, as well as a defibrillator. And these were implanted inside of his body. And if you think about it, that was pretty advanced technology for that time. And there's a story that in 2007, uh, the vice president's doctors disabled the wireless capabilities inside of his devices because of concern of a possible assassination attempt. This is the first uh, case that we know of where a medical device that was implanted inside of a person had a security concern, a concern that it would be hacked. And in fact, uh, the television show Homeland that very year depicted a plot such as this one. In 2011, a security researcher by the name of Barnaby Jack showed a real attack against a commercial insulin pump. And what he did was he attacked the wireless capabilities of the pump and he set up a special antenna that was able to seize control of any device within 300 feet. And this uh, was also consistent with an academic paper that was published around that time that showed attack against different medical devices. So how did we get here? How did we get to the point where medical devices could cause such threats to actual people. Well, let's look at the way that cyber attacks have evolved. So in the beginning, we had these attacks where someone would attack a network and they might make an attack against the firewall or they would attack, uh, try to break into a system, but everything was contained to the digital world. More recently, we've seen that digital tools can be used to attack cyber physical systems. And I'll talk about that in a second. But what I really mean is that an attacker is sitting at a computer and they're able to launch a successful attack against an actual system like a dam or a control system that controls some critical infrastructure piece. And finally, we get to the point where attackers are attacking systems that are directly connected to people. So let me give you an example of something that happened very recently, just this past February. It happened two days before the Super Bowl. And what happened was that in a water treatment plant, an attacker had been able to get remote access to the plant and change the amount of sodium hydroxide that's in the water. And with very small amounts, like 100 parts per million, this is a cleaner and this is an agent that's helpful in treating water. However, it was changed to 11,100 parts per million. And what that does is it becomes fatal. And what, without getting into the technical details of the attack, there were several different factors that contributed to it. There was a configuration error in a piece of software. There was mismanaged credentials. And when this change happened, someone was able to view this change by uh, noticing that on their screen, the cursor was moving and actually changing this from 100 to 11,100. And so a vigilant system administrator caught this. Um, people could have died. And we look at the connection between the cyber world where we know that hackers and viruses and all of these malware exists and um, the real world where we have water treatment plants and things like that. And we say, wow, this is a pretty scary new world we live in because we know that the internet and cyberspace is very insecure and it has a lot of problems. And so when we think about this, we have to think about what direction we're going in and where our world is headed. So where we're headed is the era of smart medicine. We have many different devices that are becoming so much smarter now. And is that a good thing? Well, it's a great thing for patient care. Um, but let me take you through several devices one at a time and look at how smart they've become and how wonderful they are from a medical perspective, and then consider how dangerous they are from a cybersecurity perspective. And I should say that I'm not giving this talk just to scare people. I actually think that the uh, medical device industry has made terrific strides. And actually their devices are much, much more secure than they would be if they weren't putting in a very, very concerted effort. And still it's interesting, instructive and important to look at what are the cybersecurity threats. So we see here in the top left an infusion pump. This is a very advanced device 
that can actually be connected directly to a patient to administer medications. The doctor uh, can connect to this from their home or office and see exactly what's going on in terms of when the medication is being taken and can even dispense uh, medication changes to the program that the patient is using. And so if you consider that the doctor is doing this over the internet, you have to think about, well, this, what kind of operating system is this device running? And if a bad actor were able to take control of this device remotely, what are the things that they could do? Now, in reality, the new designs of these are, are being designed with security in mind. They have, for example, two completely separate operating system, one for the management of the device and the other for the medical clinical control. And there are all kinds of safeties in place. For example, if a particular medication uh, should only be administered within a particular uh, safe quantity, then any type of setting on the device that is outside of those parameters would get flagged and probably wouldn't cause activation of that dangerous configuration. And this gets back to the previous example. If you consider that water treatment plant, you really never should allow 11,100 parts per million. In fact, if the safe range is say 100 to 200, then it would be nice if the system itself would prevent anything beyond that. Next, we can look at a high-tech MRI machine where you can get images directly on your smartphone. There's a cloud component to this. And all of these types of devices that are being introduced now are allowing for more internet connectivity, more high-tech control, and obviously more risk. The next one to look at is a robotic surgery room. Surgery and robotic surgery in particular has advanced to a point that might surprise you and that a lot of people are not aware of. For example, in this scene that we're looking at, we can see there's a patient on the table on the right. And there are two doctors who have their head inside of a device. And what that is, is it's a monitor where they can see what's happening with the surgery. And the surgery is actually being performed by these robotic arms that are being controlled by these surgeons. So in this example, they're in the same room, but there's really no reason why, and in fact, it does happen that these people can be in other locations and all of the communication is happening over the internet. So we see that there's a doctor or technician who's standing right over the patient just to make sure everything is okay. And this opens up worlds of opportunities in underprivileged, underprivileged countries, for example, um, they may not have access to these types of doctors and these specializations, but in fact, if the doctor can be in a remote location, uh, you might be able to distribute the robotic component of the system in a lot more places than you'd be able to get doctors. And so it opens up the access to this type of treatment to many different people. However, as a security person, my concern is that the communication is happening over the internet. And this would be a pretty scary place for someone to interfere either in a denial of service attack or uh, some other type of attack against the system. And you can only imagine if the endpoint components were to be infected with malware, uh, what that would mean. The next uh, one that we're looking at is a home dialysis machine. This is a life-saving technology that allows people to have treatments in their own home that in the past they only would have been able to get in a hospital. And of course, this is smart. It's running an operating system. It's running a lot of application software and all of that uh, means that the software could have bugs and there could be security compromise. Obviously, in the scenarios that we're talking about, the risk of compromise and the consequences of compromise is much more serious than before we had all of these smart, connected, internet-based device. Um, and then we see a glucose monitor here, which is also a smart communicating device, uh, which uh, I talked about the example of somebody hacking one of these early on, and an implantable defibrillator. And that is the example we talked about with Dick Cheney. So if we look at these medical devices and we say, well, what really are the risks? Well, there are quite a few considerations because these things have a bigger and bigger attack surface, meaning that there are more and more ways that the bad guys can cause harm. We have everything from the fact that many of them use a smart device like a phone or a, or a tablet, and that is an avenue of attack. We have the application that controls the system that's being run over the internet by some computer, possibly in the same room, possibly not. Some of the information here is going to be kept in a local server and interacting with a medical record system, which is an EHR system, which can also be cloud-based. 
Uh, they're going to be third party peripherals, such as a video camera. And again, these things these days are smart, internet connected, software running devices. And of course, there's going to be a cloud component, which introduces uh, a larger attack surface. And again, many of these devices will communicate with other connected medical devices. And if someone were to find a vulnerability they could exploit in one of these devices, that could be used as a launch point to attack a primary system. And so we're working in an environment where there is a much higher attack surface and thus a bigger threat. Now, why would somebody attack a medical device? Well, there are many reasons. Apparently, uh, health records are more valuable than many other types of records. And I heard a quote in a talk once that uh, an accurate personal health record could be worth $10 in the black market. Um, of course, medical systems have billing and insurance data uh, there's the intellectual property of the developers of the medical device that needs to be protected. And again, this can be often used when you attack a medical device as a launch point into an internal network. Um, the last point I'll make is an important one. We've seen that there have been, especially in the healthcare industry, many ransomware attacks where an attacker takes over a system and won't let go of it without some payment. Well, you can imagine with all the medical devices that I just talked about, uh, what would happen if, for example, your infusion pump said it wouldn't, it would refuse to operate unless you sent some Bitcoin somewhere. And so I think the opportunities for ransomware are much bigger in this domain. And there are other things that one could do to attack the patient, change patient data, um, denial of service attacks, which we usually don't worry about as much as confidentiality attacks are actually front and center when it comes to medical devices. Imagine disrupting or even stopping the clinical function of a device or changing the doses. Um, I've heard it said that the uh, root access to a critical care system is nothing less than actually having root access to the patient. So we need to be very concerned about medical device safety as these devices become more complex, as they are more connected, more personal, more smart, that also means that they are more vulnerable and that we need to apply security. The good news is that the FDA has been making great strides in medical device security standards. Their approval process is quite rigorous and there's a lot of expertise being developed uh, for how to secure these medical devices and how to test them. And so I'm optimistic that we are getting it right, but I just wanted to point out how important it is to always consider security and patient safety. Thank you very much.